bitter experience, sweet experience, something else, divine intervention, fun fear, life after death, aspiration. And now, fulfillment.
corruption, inadequate funds. Everybody know in Nigeria, the banking system, the interest rate is not really favorable to manufacturing sector. Government policy, which is inconsistent, what of our own behavior in the area of patronage? Many of us have that thinking that even if Toyota and all the rest are here producing, we should still import because the thinking is that it's better than what is produced here. Because of this, National Automotive Development, National Automotive Design and Development Council decided to come up with the policy, which is NDIDP. And uh, we have seen the effect, because right now, 54 automotive assembly plants have been registered, and 30 are in operation, either assembly or producing. When we go by historical perspective, we will see that by 2014, when the policy came up, right now, we are talking of making it an act. Recently, about two weeks ago, the CEOs from, I mean, of OEM from South Africa came through an event organized by the Lord. And what we are emphasizing on is that, yes, the policy is there, but we need it to be, you know, put into an act, a law, to guarantee our investment as well as protection that is required in the industry. This next slide. Yes, the policy intends to achieve two things. One, one of the car users is taking care of it. The producers, the assemblers, component manufacturers, all these have been embedded in the policy. And of course, the policy is equally recommending a kind of intervention fund that we enable these people to produce well and to encourage completely knockdown uh, parts to be assembled rather than SKGs. When we look at the objectives of the policy, number one is employment creation. The organization international students uh, the automobiles called OICA. The said automotive industry has capability of employing over 9 million people, which is 5% of the world's total manufacturing employment by their own research. And we all know in Nigeria, we are talking of unemployment, unemployment. This particular industry can generate employment. Just like GSM, when you came, you talk of GSM repairs, you call them selling cars, I mean cars, and so many other things. So also in this industry, there are so many other areas that we come into play. If you talk of if it's well developed, plastic industry we develop, that will generate its own employment. You talk of repairs in mechanics, it will generate employment and so many other allied services. GDP contribution, right now in the country, what do we see? The major contribution in the area of GDP is oil. In whose foreign, in whose prices are foreign determined? They are internationally determined. You sell a product, but you don't determine the price. And that is why most of the times we have issues. That alone is not sufficient for an economy to be strong. 
And that is why we are looking for other areas. Of course, this government is talking of diversification. So if we develop this area, it's a way of diversifying and it will increase the GDP growth. No, go back. South Africa says that it gives 7% of GDP and 12% exports. If we develop this industry, apart from the GDP, we can as well export to neighboring towns. And that is what the CEOs that came from South Africa saw that in terms of our population, in terms of our geographical location, if they come here and establish it, they can as well export to neighboring countries. We should take the advantage. Next slide. Economy linkages. Of course, you know automotive industry, you know, has a link to virtually all sectors of economy. And we should equally take advantage. We are talking of developing small and medium scale uh, enterprises, micro enterprises. If you go to China, if you go to India, all these have been developed. Of course, we should not go far. By 1960, if you check in a week, it's known for component parts manufacturing. This is dated back as far as independence and independent era because they took advantage of the palm oil export that was going on that time and they discovered that they needed one part or the other so some people had it like a cottage industry within their backyard so we can swear key to this what was case development National Automotive Council has never stopped on that. We're in partnership with PAN, with ANAMCO, and so many other uh, bodies, assembly plans, to give skill, acquisition, and development. Right now, federal government that is trying to create employment and uh, you know, decided to partner with us in the area of empower. Is empower and build. So, uh, recently, Vice President with National Automotive Council launched it in Enugu about a month ago. The essence is that the teen youth that are jobless, they have to be trained in different sections. And as far as automotive uh, industry is concerned, we were approached in the area of automotive, which we continuously be doing. Please, next. The current state of Nigeria automotive industry, which is an opportunity to diversify the economy and create jobs. Number one, the Nigeria automotive industry development plan. You know, there are guidelines that have been introduced. It's supposed to be for 10 years. And the boss, after 10 years, it is expected that everyone will be on CKDs. The 10 years has come. So a review is going on, and we want to see how far this has you know, achieved. But I must tell you that it has achieved. If you look at those diagrams you are seeing, we have seen that. <coughs> Please go back. Okay, go forward. Next slide. Go back. The issue is that, yes, it's rising. The production level is increasing from 2012 to 2015 to meet the capacity, uh, you know, the, the capacity of the industry. But the capacity utilization is on increase. That means the policy is working. Move on. Now, I have just mentioned about legislation of the policy. I told you about CEOs 
of OEMs from South Africa, they said that yes, the policy is there. Yes, you can make use of it through persuasion. But if there is no legal backing, somebody might not be serious. And no one can enforce any right on it. And because of that, it are in, in, in the past regime, it went through the two chambers, that is the of the National Assembly. But this time around too, it has gone with this present regime. The, the, the National Assembly, they have almost completed their job, which will soon be sent to Mr. President for assent. And uh, the essence of meeting with Vice President is to quick to urge the federal government to speed up action on it so as to see that it is passed into a law. By their position, they will be highly comfortable to come to bring their investment into the country. They are willing. They have seen the potentials, but they are waiting for this to be passed into law, which the Vice President gave them assurance that that shall be done. So very shortly, we hope to have it as an act. The fiscal provisions of the NAIDB. If you look, if you listen to the news, many people are so afraid that if I, there was the rumor and the information that with uh, NAIDB, the revenue that will come into the country will be so little, and they were agitating, like, remove it, don't let it go. You see, but other analysts, they are talking that, don't let us look at the needed game. Whose economy are you promoting when you are importing? You are only uh, promoting the economy of the countries where you are importing, and not your own economy. You are only creating job opportunities for the people over there. But right now, we just need to key into this. The semi down that we are talking about, many of them will just drink fully beautiful food. They will remove that. And that's what they call the SKD. And when they come here, they put back the tire. What is the value addition? How, what is the level of economic activity? The CKD that we call in parts, in smaller parts, definitely when it gets there, they must hire more hands to put this together. And in hiring more hands means increase in employment. And that is why it's emphasizing on it. They are not going to... <coughs> As long as whatever is the fear will be temporary because in the long run there will still be some other levies in form of local tariffs that will increase the uh, revenue base of the country. But what of the unemployment that will be wiped away or minimized? What of social crimes that will be minimized? So when we look into that, we will see that the advantage outweighs the disadvantage. So we cannot do but to next night to accept it. Then there are other support programs, standards. That has been the, uh, the complaint. Like there was a time when the Indians came. I was asked to go with them to uh, in the way where they were producing radio spas. When we got there, they were so excited receiving us. I was equally glad that we were there. But when we came out, the India said most of the things being produced are top standard. I was shocked. He said, number one, you don't use ordinary eyes to determine. You know, many of us, when we go, we say, it's fake, it's fake. If they ask you, 
What how did you know is fake? What check did you run on it? It is not ordinary art. You must have equipment. So National Automotive Council decided to establish three test centers in order to be sure and help the uh, auto assembly plants. When you produce, you bring your samples. One test center is in Lagos, one is in Enugu, and one is in uh, Saria. The emission test center, Lagos, uh, the material is uh, Saria, while the component is uh, Enugu. And they are 90% completion. We are hoping that the remaining things that needed to be done will be completed this year. And with that, even if you bring vehicles from uh, overseas, the standards can be tested. If you produce only for Nigeria, is it only Nigeria that is needed for the auto assembly plants to break in? The answer is no. They need for you. So for them to export to other countries, the standards must be met. And that is the essence of establishing the test standard. We are doing it in conjunction with some, which is the body responsible for a uh, certification of standard. Some car for imported vehicles. You see, most of these vehicles that have been imported, which are called used vehicles, or automobile cars, or vehicles, many of them are not roadworthy. And that is why the road safety, they are really working on that. And then we are looking at some car for imported vehicles that as soon as they are imported, possibly right from the, uh, the port. So they will be tested. Many of us, we feel happy when we get there. But what do we see? A lot of breakdowns. A lot of repairs. Pollution. And so many other things. There is, uh, you know, a, a compromise on engineering integrity on them. So all this, we need to remove them because we are not talking of them coming to produce only for the country, but as well for the international community. Next slide. What about market development? Pricing. You will see that most of the vehicles being produced, that is why they are not getting patronage. They are beyond the reach of an average individual. It is so expensive. When you ask them, they will tell you that, number one, energy. We all know about that. It's key to what they are doing. What of the uh, other components like steel? Assuming that Yakuta is developed, we should know that Rather than importing, we will have gotten it locally. And that will have reduced the cost element that will be from that particular area. So, the, another thing is that some of them to concentrate on big men. We are, most of them will just be bringing only all these uh, high level cars. And how many big men do we have? If we take their proportion to the entire population, they are not many. So we are working with the assembly plants to look into the area of where majority of people belong and come up with cars that are needed by these people. With that, the volume they are anticipating will be achieved. So this is ongoing. When we look at the credit purchase scheme, <coughs> like I mentioned just now, that what is killing the industry is that they are not getting followed. They are not really getting the volume. And you know that when you have mass production, the unit cost will come down. And as it's coming down, so also people <coughs> are getting the advantage. And uh, 
people prefer to convert us because that is what falls within their income. And what we are looking at is that we should work out schemes. In some other countries like Malaysia, like China, like India, even some auto assembly plants, they have credit schemes. We are, it is not just buying a vehicle with cash down with lump sum at once. You pay instrumentally and spread between uh, three and seven years. That is what they have. The National Automotive Council is seriously working on it. That is why South Africa, they ran in South Africa, then they came up and uh, at the last meeting with the Lord, they equally made mention that he gave me the opportunity. Nigerian banks are being consulted. Right now, we are working with some Nigerian banks as well. But their position is the interest rate at which they get the money. They cannot give it out lower than that. Otherwise, they will be operating at a loss. And uh, when they, they have to pay back the money that they have gotten with interest. So, we are looking at a kind of intervention fund from our part. We are equally consulting with CBA because CBA has intervention fund for various sectors. So that if we bring in our own fund and they to bring in, because a National Assembly is of the opinion that don't ever give your money to them. They will mismanage it. But let them bring their own counterpart funding. When they to have a stake in the arrangement, they will be serious. They will recover your money. Otherwise, whatever you allow them to give out, they might not re recover the money, which means the, 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 the scheme might die in natural death. So, on that note, we are equally working together, fine tuning things to see that if we bring our intervention form, which is from government side, they match it with their own, then probably our own that is coming at a lower, I mean, at a single digit, which is aimed at developing the sector and the individual, can now narrow down the interest rate that will be within the reach of people. Because once that scheme is allowed, to thrive, believe you me, the auto industry will develop. What is killing it right now is that many people cannot afford to buy the brand new vehicles that are being produced currently in the country. And in all over the world, that is what they do in order to improve uh, on any particular sector. Then we talk of uh, used vehicles. The Lord, when they came, they equally made mention that why is it that there is no levy on Tokumbo cars? There is duty, yes, what of levy? Which means they are thinking is that let there be duty 35%, let there be levy 35%, so 70% of it will discourage people from buying Tokumbo. We know, yes, if that will be achieved. So it can be uh, done. But right now, do we have the capacity? Do they produce the volume that is needed, which is not yet achieved? So federal government, through LADDC, does not want a situation where the demand will not be met. But in the interim, let's see what we can do. But right now, we are working hand in hand with them to see. Their position is that let there be a restructuring, just like in other countries. What they do is that you buy, yes, used cars. All of us will not start riding brand new vehicles at the same time, that we should not have that mentality. There are people, beginners. Beginners should not be looking to all those high-priced vehicles. 
they can begin with fairly use, but let it be the vehicles that are produced and used within the country. And those things, we are working on them. To see that if when they produce, some people will use, then they, they buy from other people. Even a skin that when you use, you don't want it again, you can resell it back to the manufacturers who will recycle it and come up with new, which means there will be second-hand values for everything. So we are seriously working on that. And all these are coming up under the same policy that we are talking about. Next slide. Patronage is very key. It's highly disheartening that even states, government bodies, they are not even patronizing the locally uh, assembled plants. The, 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 it is very sad. How can you be produce, producing for a country only for them to go outside to go and bring them? And that is why the uh, Office of Secretary to the uh, uh, Federation decided to issue a circular directing all government bodies and agencies to buy made in Nigeria vehicles. And uh, not only that, public uh, procurement bureau, they have given a more power to it. That if you send your procurement processes to them that you want to procure vehicles, they send it to NADDC to find out whether the, where they intend to buy these vehicles, they are from those plants that have been licensed. And which means things are getting better through the policy. If that could be achieved and everybody can key into it, definitely. We will give patronage to the industry, and that will help all of us. The same thing, or we as journalists, we should equally encourage the states, the local governments, to key into this agenda. Because it should not it shouldn't be only for the federal government. If it is not done across levels, we might not be able to achieve the expected and required uh, impact. Smuggling, we all know that smuggling is very rampant. There are several rules and people know them. And we all know that Nigeria Customs Service, they are, they are trying their best, but the smugglers, they are not relenting. We know how, Nigeria, how the criminals can behave. They always take advantage of loopholes. Right now, in order to correct it, they say it should come through what? The, uh, the port, that is water port, and not land borders. And uh, of course, that will not remove the fact that some people will still try to beat the system. But what NDDC has done here is to establish an electronic online solution, which is, you have seen the website, okay, okay, the website. So through this, we are working with them to see that the thing is captured. Please, next slide, let's move fast, five minutes more. Manpower development, I've already explained that, that we are working on it to ensure that people are really. Then infrastructure. We all, we have all, we all we have been hearing about auto parks. We have uh, Oshoko, Inewi, and uh, um, Kaduna. You need to, through Mahindra, they have prepared the feasibility and master plan for that of uh, Inewi. And uh, they have come up with plans, which is going to be on PPP. So government will provide the infrastructure, then the rest will be handled on private uh, basis. 
and Mahindra will gain source for the uh, private uh, investors. And the essence is that it will be a cluster. That anything you want, either spare parts, other manufacturing, other sales, either that, they will be in one shop. And that is it. And uh, whatever they have done, they have been repl replicated in Oshogo as well as in uh, Kaduna. Games, we cannot but say that there are so much games in the area of any IDP. Because I've just mentioned to you, 54 have been lancet, 5, 6 before died, 54 lancet, 30 in operation. The like, and uh, they are producing various uh, plants. So, and then, if you look at the CBN, I've already mentioned it, we from National Automotive Council, we are already working on how to get more funds. Then we are talking of uh, ensuring that infrastructure is provided, as well as, uh, you know, providing the test centers so that there will be no need of this fake or no fake here. Just go on. Then um, we, we have mentioned about uh, uh, auto parks. Yes, go on. Then I've mentioned about specialized training that is going on, the Empower, then the ones we are arranging right now, we have just sent letters to various go go uh, governors. Because of governors approach us, what can you do? We need it. And we are already saying that we can offer specialized training to ensure that these teaming youth, they are engaged. Yes, go on. Then challenges. Of course, the bona fide which is being lanced, many of them, you know, they equally engage in sharp practices, which review is ongoing. Some of them said they are ready on CKD. When you get there, you see SKD, which is not really good for the system because right now we want to move to CKD and not SKD. And of course, we are working with the customs to ensure that the smuggling is highly reduced. We are talking of policy to be made into law. And uh, of course, the issue of uh, used vehicles, trying to contain it so as to promote the sales of new vehicles. And uh, like I've mentioned to you, the remedy is this. All of us, we are from various offices. So let's preach this to everyone. That without patronage of those who have decided to bring in their investment into this country, there is no way they can succeed. Their sources will mean our sources. Let's encourage local government councils to do the same. Let's encourage state government to do the same so that all of us will be on the same page. Thank you very much.